Sometimes people get wrapped up in their success being about you had this many views on your YouTube channel and you know you have this many followers. Like for me, real success is invisible. Prince JR's first official visual of 2020 was an 11 minute music video that seemed more like a short film and tackled issues of race, interracial relationships, and teenage love. We have officially entered the top five videos of the countdown. Coming in at number five, Teenagers. And so, the American Civil War left the nation in complete division. Sorry to drop, Mr. Coleman. Good morning, class. Good morning, Ms. Huntington. I'd like to introduce you to our new student, Samuel Morris. Please give him a warm welcome. lot of challenging things about tackling such important and um, kind of controversial topics in a teenager's video. My videographer, Miss Carla Braithwaite, you know, we had many discussions just even about how to, you know, go about the story. There was a lot of things even through the script that we had to revise and make changes of just to make sure that it was able to be accessed by multiple people while still keeping it as realistic to probably events that would happen during that time period in the 1950s. I think that Teenagers was perfect because it was brilliant to kind of bring out the song in a totally different way and even give it more meaning and create such a deep, powerful story around it. One of the themes that I was trying to get at in the video was miseducation. Even from the opening shot, you have this white male teacher who's literally teaching a class of students and he he literally, out of his own mouth as a teacher, was like the Civil War was a good thing and it was necessary because it did bring about division. And, you know, the character of Sam, he's like, I don't know if that was a good thing, you know? And so I think that it's just very powerful when you think about it that there's people who are in positions of power, even as teachers, who are teaching the wrong things. It is it's happening in the classrooms, it's happening in government, even sometimes in the entertainment industry, things are just being taught and things are being passed down and ideas that are technically wrong. And so that's why miseducation pops up at the end of the video. Hey. Where are you from? New York. Ah, I'm Rose. Ah, I'm Sam. <laughs> Rose, do you know where Mr. Klobuchar's room is? Yes, it's the last door. Is it better than his class? Uh, a little better. Thanks. Bye, Rose. Bye, Sam. Being cast in the role of Rose two days prior to filming was exciting and also so nerve-wracking. I think the morning of, I was like, oh, yeah, I think I really realized like what I said yes to. <laughs> so it was a little bit more nerve-wracking to kind of like 
deal with learning lines and things that I've never really done before. What I like most about my character is that, uh, most of all, he's a helpless romantic. I relate to him a lot, or hopeless romantic, whatever it's called. I like how sarcastic he is and how strong he is and able to dust off all the disrespect and racism that comes his way rather than, you know, being the typical angry black man. He has a really big chip on his shoulder and I, I think he manages it really well. He's very level-headed. Jessica, she was like really cute and dope and shy. So it was fun to like bring it out of her and play around. Being thrown on set with somebody is nothing new to me. You know, to be all romantic or angry. Uh, I had a fake fight with Kane in the scene as well. That was that was pretty fun to get into without knowing him. Hey boy, didn't I tell you to stay away from Rose? I guess I didn't listen. Now what? You ain't nothing but a nigga. Really, Billy, oh my gosh, so original. Like, I haven't heard that go before. Ahead. Listen to your brother, on, he's one of the smart ones, go. You wanna fight? <laughs> nah, not really. All I need is a tree and a rope, It'd be a lot easier. It's not working, let's just go right now. <laughs> you know, I bet it must kill you to know that as much as you want her, mm. she wants me. Yeah, buddy, she wants something. Hey, stop, stay, stop, stop. Let's go, let's go. Don't you fight with me, boy. In one breath, I want to say there has been progress because it's not as overt or like blatant, the disrespect or the names that they call you. You'll hear it in like some states, like, you know, like way deep down in Mississippi where, you know, they'll probably like really uh, be offended by my skin tone. But, you know, some things happened to me and it, it feels like we're in the 50s you know i have plenty of cop stories where i was stopped and frisked and it's like yo for all this i might as well have gone back to you know what law has been passed but then there's the progress of you know being in school with you know nobody segregates anymore so yeah we we still have a lot of work to do and it's it's a double-edged sword you heard about the fighting? i'm i'm just in detention. Sam, it's got to stop. I can't let them win. <laughs> I have to. What? Nobody I wants this. Rose, what are you saying? We want this. Shouldn't that be enough? I love you. I... I... I can't. You can. If I could create an alternate ending to the video, I think I would have chose Rose to fight a little more for the relationship. You see Sam fighting for the relationship. You see him having so much oppression that he was facing. And it would have been nice to see Rose put in the same effort. To my knowledge, Sam and Rose were supposed to grow old together. But due to casting, it couldn't happen. And out the, out the gate, he was like, you know what? No, they're not going to be together. She's just going to break up with him. And that's going to be the end of that because not everything has to be a fairy tale or a happy ending. It's, it's sad to see Rose make some of the decisions that she made just to give in to pressures from the society and her peers that she was facing. She let peer pressure get to her. She left her chocolate over what her friends thought of her, you know? It's hard to come back from. And I think Sam really loved her, so he's willing to give her another chance. So it would take time, you know? What I enjoyed most about working with Prince JR is how enthusiastic and energetic and encouraging and uplifting he is all the time. He's always making you laugh, smile. Um, and, and even if I had like a take where I wasn't feeling that confident, he was always super, super encouraging. He's very flexible and on his toes. And it's a great skill as an artist to have. I think he's really good at not marrying his ideas in the arts and out of the arts. Uh, he, he's very able to change, which is a great skill I think uh, every artist needs that applies to life as well. You know, when life hands you lemon, you make iced tea. Uh, even if they don't, you know, give you lemons, you make orange juice. Uh, 
Uh, I, I digress. One fun fact about teenagers, you know, it's crazy. So we actually shot the video in 2019, but it didn't come out till 2020. So it actually was one of the first releases that I had for 2020, but we did shoot the video in 2019. But even crazier, the actual song was recorded in 2018. So it's actually like the first song that Nick Walker and I actually ever collaborated on. And we did it so early on in like the beginning of our like kind of like new careers. And so we even laughed like, you know, dang, this song old, you know, but we just really were like, it's hot though. And so um, it's just funny that after all that time, it finally came out in 2020. Everyone knows Nick Walker, that's my boy, that's my best friend, he kills it every time. If I could just use one word to describe that song, it's just fun. And it's a hit record, but that's what we do, we just make hits. The different size of she, it's not about me, I'm just gonna make you think about the things you don't generally hear women speak. Acknowledging our different parts privately, though this is what women have experienced or even are experiencing. With this CP, I'm able to express all sides of she freely. No holding on to society's views, dismissing all limits thrown upon women, I'll be the voice for the muted without fear of being prosecuted. Therefore, you shall listen. An excerpt from Portrait of Enduring Love as a Seasonal Haircut, a poem by Juan Wynn Jr., originally published in the Banyan Review. Two years ago, my mother treated thick ropes of kite string dreads for an afro cloud of frost. During summer days, when everyone sweated underneath the burning apple in the sky. Even willow trees awaited shaking off their heavy braids for the first breath of snow. This year, I lent my gardening hands for Mother's Day. As grim as 2020 may have been for most people, Prince JR, Nick Walker, they found some time to turn up and live life to the fullest. Coming in at number four, C'est la vie. We don't say no. of collaborations whether it be my songs or his songs we've collaborated on a lot of songs and projects together I mean from deep songs to songs that just really make you think to kind of darker depressing songs to love songs R&B songs pop songs I mean the list really just goes on we really can just create whatever we want and we don't like to box ourselves but what I feel was different about this song um, was this was just really a song that we were able to have fun on that you know we were able to just turn up and kind of talk our talk and even when it came to the music video really just express ourselves through our fashion choices and you know just really be free and outside of the box C'est la vie, c'est la vie, c'est la vie 
I know they mad, I got that drip when I walk through They won't approach me, but I ain't that hard to talk to When you in and swear that they just wanna stalk you When you in and swear that they just wanna chalk you But you can't kill me, no, no I'm too free Impressed like loose leaf, kick hate like Bruce Lee My life a movie, I rap like Uzi I like Jacuzzi If I could just use one word to describe that song It's just fun, and it's a hit record, but that's what we do We just make hits I just really enjoyed making this song and it was just a really great process from the studio to the music video, everything. It was just a really fun song to make. Past learn, I see the hate, I swear it's no debate. I earn feeling great, my turn. It's my time, it's the vibe, get in like I'm living good, I live that different kind of lifestyle. I'm looking good, I live that different kind of lifestyle. I'm eating good, I live that different kind of lifestyle. Cause this is the life, this is the life. Yeah, it's funny, those matching outfits, you know, it was definitely my idea. And you know, French JR, he definitely likes to copy me a lot. And no, I'm just kidding. Actually, that was just kind of like a funny coincidence. We were both shopping and we both saw the jacket and he kind of was like, you know, I, I want to get that jacket. In the back of my head, I was like, oh, I would want to get that jacket too, but I don't really want to make it seem like I'm just trying to copy him. So I even was like, oh dude, I know you're getting that jacket, but I kind of want to get the jacket as well. He's like, yeah, dude, do, do it, do whatever you got to do. Um, and so it was just kind of like a, a funny thing that we just both wound up liking the jacket and we both got the, the same exact jackets. Like Nine Love Lives was like another era, another chapter in his life, even from the previous music that he was making. And since then with Perks of Being a Pop Star and some of his other EPs, you know, the music has just grown so much. He's not afraid to try new things. He's not afraid to do weird things or eccentric things on the track. He always is someone that's like, I wanna do something different. I want to push the boundaries. But what I think, you know, he really grew in in 2020 was caring less about what other people think about, you know, his music or what he's trying to do. Because we've realized just as artists that people are going to judge us. People are going to look at us sideways. People are not always going to be here for what we're doing or certain songs or they're not going to like this. And it's a trap that you can fall into as an artist to kind of you know, just make songs to appease a certain demographic or certain people. And while we do make art and music for other people to hear, at the same time, the most important fan that we have is ourselves and God. And we even say it to each other, you know, okay, do you like the song? Does God like the song? Okay, then other than that, you know, if people rock with it, that's great and that's a bonus. But if they don't, then that's also okay. And I think that that's the mindset that he's definitely been in in 2020. It's like, look, I'm gonna make the art that I wanna make. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I'm gonna spread the message that I wanna spread. And if people are, aren't here for it, I'm not gonna let that stop me. And I'm not gonna let that make me second guess myself as to whether or not I wanna put this art out. Um, when are we gonna get a collaboration album from me and Prince JR? And would we ever do one? Hmm. I don't know. I guess you'll just have to find out. You released some of your own projects. Uh, your sophomore album, Anointed, the Last Love VP, as well as the music video, Never Mind, All Girls Are the Same. Looking back at 2020, what is one highlight for you? Yeah, definitely. I, those were two big projects that I released in 2020, and they're definitely very meaningful to me, both Anointed and The Last Love EP. And, and 2020 definitely was a monumental year for me and for everybody, just as an artist, as a person. And, you know, I think that the most monumental thing for me actually was The Last Love EP, just based off of the things that came with it, you know, the artwork that I chose to do for the cover, um, the merchandise. I've never done a merch drop before like that. And so that was my first time making merch, trying to sell it to people, trying to deliver, do different things like that. Um, the songs that I made on there are very big um, commercial songs that could be played anywhere. Um, and it's a very vulnerable album as well. But I think the even bigger thing for me was the the music video for Never Mind All Girls Are The Same. And that was such a big thing for me because um, that really pushed me to get out of my comfort zone. And that was really something that I've never done before. I've definitely shot music videos before. I've been in music videos before, but this definitely took it to another level where I really had to act. I really had to perform, you know? I really had to, like I said, step out of my comfort zone and do things that I've never done before, even to portray a toxic relationship. And that that just really, that 
that was difficult for me at times, but it was good for me at the same time because it helped me to grow. And I'm definitely the type of person that I can get in my own head sometimes and think that I can't do certain things and they're too hard or, you know, I can't do something like that because I've never done it. But once I actually step out and do it and see that I can do it, I'm like, oh, okay, now it's a wrap because once I see I can do something, then I know, okay, I can do this moving forward. So I, that, that project was definitely huge and definitely shout out to um, the videographer, James Dylan Brown, the director, Prince JR, and the model and actor, Pamela Shamari. You know, they really all also encouraged me and made it a safe space for me and brought the best out of me. And even in moments where I was struggling or having a hard time or not really sure what to do, they all really pushed me and encouraged me to like, no, you can do it, you know? So I definitely really appreciate all of them. But that video, that project, that was definitely a monumental thing for me in 2020. Okay, so one fun fact about Say La Vie. Everyone knows Nick Walker, that's my boy, that's my best friend. He kills it every time. Um, Barry B and Lucid actually came on the track in a very interesting way. So we were in the studio and I had invited Lucid to come to the studio to record um, his part on another song that we had, which unfortunately that song never actually even came out. And so he brought Barry B along to the studio with him. And that was my first time just meeting Barry B and just from me talking to my mans and hearing his voice, I said, dude, you have like the perfect like rap singing voice. Like I just heard his voice and I was like, yeah, dude, your voice is dope. He was like, okay. And then I basically was like, you know what? I'm supposed to be recording this other song called Say La Vie. Would you actually mind just hopping on this chorus? And he was like, okay. And then I told Lucid, I was like, yeah, you can hop on the chorus as well. Cause I was going to do, you know, my own thing, but I felt like, uh, their voices actually matched and then they jumped on it. And then there you go. It just became like a hit. And I just freaking, I love his part probably the most. So I think it's really uh, crazy how that was my first time meeting him. He was in the studio and he just jumped on it. Lucid was already on it. And then that was it. And then you have say la vie. For the look that I was going for and the type of dancer that I wanted, she was just going to come in and kill it. I've been dancing for a really long time, uh, since I was a kid. Every artist really just needs a way to express themselves, whether you're an actor, a dancer, a singer. Yo, 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 what's good everyone? It's your boy Nick Walker. You already know what it is. I hope you all are enjoying Prince JR's top 10 video countdown of 2020. Big shouts out to Prince JR for allowing me to be a part of this whole thing. I just wanted to say, real quick, my brand new EP, The Last Love EP, is out right now on all streaming platforms, as well as my brand new music video for Nevermind, All Girls Are The Same, is out on YouTube right now. So make sure to go check those out. Follow me on the gram at the real Nick Walker underscore and keep enjoying the special man. Let's get it. Just let me know, let me know. Oh. Now what you gonna say when it all comes crashing down? Cause I know these girls, they all tell lies. Heart been broken, that's too many times. Been left on the side and that's time after time. You can't say I ain't tried, but my life on the line and you still say. Do you wanna, do you wanna, do you wanna love me girl? Do you wanna, do you wanna, do you wanna love me girl? Goodbye, for now, thought we last till the end I had to let you go, let you go, let you go, let you go I had to let you go, let you go, let you go, let you go I had to let you go What's going on everybody? My name's Edgar, founder of Marca Grande Marketing we're a full service digital marketing agency working with entrepreneurs, businesses, artists, and other brands, helping them build up their online presence and reach, helping them build up their online audience and clientele, as well as helping them ultimately bring in more revenue. Now we do this through targeted advertising, social media growth, lead generation, web development, and even press and blog services, as well as a few other services as well. If you're looking to level up your brand to the next level and really unlock your full potential, don't hesitate to reach out. You can find us at marketgrandemarketing.com or at Instagram and Facebook at marketgrandemarketing. We can't wait to meet you and we hope to hear from you guys soon. So we are now down to the top three. I wonder what they could be. Coming in at number three, Death of a Disco Dancer.
Death of a Disco Dancer is a very interesting title. I used to be a huge fan of Degrassi growing up as a kid. So, you know, I you know, I know Drake as Jimmy from Degrassi. The writers of Degrassi, they actually name every episode after a song from the 80s. And so, Death of a Disco Dancer is actually a song from a group called The Smiths from the 80s, but there was an episode that was surrounding one of the characters and the meaning behind what that title meant and how it connected to what was going on in the episode, I thought was such a deep concept, which was basically a concept of like, you have a beautiful girl or this woman who seemingly has everything and has the world wrapped around her fingers but then sometimes when you really put things into perspective some of the things that people are chasing after especially when you're a beautiful woman they're kind of meaningless and they can all come crashing down and so that's kind of what the energy of the song is and that's what one of the messages behind the song and so I think it was just cool me taking that title that I heard from a long time when I was thought it was such a dope title and then putting it and actually creating my own song which is actually based off an 80s song they shine so bright Yeah, you're where you are Can't you see? Yeah. Funny enough, Death of a Disco Dancer was only supposed to have like one outfit for me and one outfit for Selma. But I was telling Selma what I wanted her look to be for the video. I wanted her to go through her wardrobe first and see if she had anything that kind of fit my vision. But then, you know, Selma being poppin', she sent me like six different outfits and I'm like, dang, that looks dope. And I'm like, but that's dope. And so it was just like everything she had was dope. And I was like, you know what? Just wear everything. And then I basically said, I'm just gonna match your fly and get outfits that I think kind of can be a nice compliment to what she was wearing. And that's pretty much why we had so many outfit changes in that video. Can't make you happy, dolls and guys can't make you happy, stars are blind, they can't First time I worked with Prince JR on Mary Poppins, I hadn't met him yet. So, you know, going into a situation where you don't meet an artist yet, you're kind of like, ah, how are they gonna be? Are they gonna be cool? And he was super professional, super nice. So going into Disco Dancer, I felt super comfortable knowing, oh man, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a professional set, he's gonna be great, it's gonna be just a great time. So I felt more comfortable and at ease. Well, if you've never worked with Prince JR, let me just let you guys know, he plans everything out to the T. So prior to hearing the song, I kind of had an idea of what the vibe was going to be like, um, just off of what he was telling me. And when I heard the song, I was like, oh, this is exactly what it is. And I just felt it. He gave me everything I needed. <laughs> I've been dancing for a really long time, since I was a kid, high school days, I would say. And it's really important because every artist really just needs a way to express themselves, whether you're an actor, a dancer, a singer. It's just, it's like you're living in another world when you're, when you're doing these things. So not a lot of people can relate unless you're, you're in it. So it's really important to me. It was challenging for me to act and dance as well. Acting is not something that I've done so much of. I've done minor roles and I've taken classes. So, you know, you have the jitters when you really aren't like too comfortable in something just yet. But I knew that I was ready to do it and that I want to do more. So when it came to the acting portion, of course, I was like ah, a little nervous, but it actually went smoothly. The one thing that I love the most about Prince JR is his creative vision and that he's involved in the entire process to production, to what the dancer is doing, to the outfit of the dancer, to his outfits, working with the director and even in post. He's involved in all aspects of his project. He's super professional, uh, super creative and just outgoing and it inspires you to, to you know, want to do great. He does not miss a beat. He knows what he wants and that's what I love most about him. What did you enjoy most about working with Selma in this video? Uh, well, first of all, Selma is so epic, such a talented dancer, and I think um, I just knew that for the look that I was going for and the type of dancer that I wanted, she was just gonna come in and kill it. And I think her professionalism, you know, she obviously, like I said, she didn't even hear the song before we shot, but she just had an idea, just what I was describing, and just she just came in and absolutely killed the game. And I knew it had to be someone who could kind of keep up with me because it was only gonna be her and me in the whole video. And it's a definite throwback to like those Michael Jackson, the way you make me feel type of visuals where he just has like a really 
dope dancer girl playing the lead and you know it's just him and her and I think that she she kept up with me very well I had to keep up with her I, I was out of breath you know what I'm saying <laughs> some parts but it was just really uh, cool seeing how she just carried herself so well in that visual Okay, so one fun fact about Death of a Disco Dancer was, ironically, uh, I actually had recorded the song the day before the video. I, you know, it was crazy. I had told Selma the idea, the plans, but she never actually heard the song because the song wasn't even done. I was like, oh, let me just go to the studio the day before the video and hopefully everything goes well and we'll just basically wing it. And so that's exactly what happened. The actual song wasn't even done until the day before we shot the visual. I want to give like this deep answer, you know what I'm saying, to that question. But the reality is the barbershop was closed, it was quarantine, and I couldn't get my beard trimmed. From the moment it came on, I was like, wait a second. I think one of the main messages that I was trying to get at in Black Boys Don't Die is black power. Personalities, birds anatomy, don't believe them insane. Picture of reality, merge of fantasy, that's the scene in my brain. Witness the gravity of my savagery, life abandoned me, that established me, slightly damaged me. Tell my family that's the reason I'm strained. Strain, 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 strain. Mixed personality, 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 strain, 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 strain. Mixed personality, 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 I'm strained. My big anatomy makes you savage, I keep the biddies at bay. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind It was something so special about that place Even when your emotions have an echo into so much space As we've said before, 2020 was heavy on all of us. Prince JR captured all of our emotions in the video with the most heart. Coming in at number two, heart. This is the It's interesting how the heart video actually came about. During just like kind of like the heart of quarantine, I wanted to do a video for a song I had called History of Violence. The History of Violence song was very much so this like Black Lives Matter, um, Black Power Empowerment type of song. And I had basically mapped out the whole treatment for it. I had casted all the dancers, all the actors in the video, I had got the location, and I wanted to basically shoot it as soon as possible because I was having like a strong reaction to what was happening um, at the time with the murders of like George Floyd, Brown, and just everything that was happening. It might have been like three days before we actually were set to film everything. Something just dawned on me to actually not do a history of violence and to instead do heart from my Perks of Being a Pop Star album. That was a huge change, you know what I'm saying? I literally then had to tell my dancers, okay, I know I told y'all to do choreography for this song, but actually I wanna change it to this other song. As I said before, you know, they actually had created choreography for a totally different song. And when they actually came to 
the set to film hard, they didn't really have enough time to create choreography. So as choreographed and in sync all those dancers seen, that wasn't planned. That was just freestyle. They all were freestyle and they just were in sync. I can't even tell you. It was just supernatural the way they all complemented each other so well. They're just all talented and just naturally were able to get into character and do their thing. And so I think that's definitely a testament to all the dancers in heart. I love featuring dancers in all of my videos because dance and just that element and bringing that aspect is just so epic and it just really brings a new layer to the song and I think people can connect with dancing so shout out to every single dancer in that video y'all killed it I'm the type of artist that really pays attention to details and just so you know every time you see anything from Prince JR something means something and so just even in the representation of the different colors for the different dancers, they definitely represented different emotions. Literally just seconds before filming told them, you're this emotion, you're this emotion, you're this emotion, and you're that emotion. I do kind of want people to just be left to interpret things in their own way, but that distinction and that particular artistic license that I took to make everything color coordinated in that sense from the dancing and their movement and their acting and everything like that was, was very meaningful. Even my particular outfit being white was very meaningful to the message of the song as well. So I guess you guys just have to dig deeper to figure out some other things. To see how that video came out after all those last minute changes is just phenomenal. And I think that the spirit was totally with us that day. So um, yeah, it was actually not really planned. It was a last minute thing. And I think for it to become probably one of my most epic visuals to date, that's just, it's, it's like, I'm stunned by that. Yes, my initial reaction was just shocking. It was just very speechless. Just from the looks of it and the thumbnail, just seeing those smoke bombs were just, I knew something was going to be powerful. There was so much happening that I got the message. Dance is very important to me. What I love about dance is the structure and being able to have one molded piece and one molded choreography and be able to showcase my work. That's something that I love about dancing. What inspires me about Prince JR, he knows what he wants in his music video. He knows what the direction it will go. He knows it all that is just mind blowing to me. He's very content, he's very compassionate. And that's an inspiration that I can see in him and I can see for myself as well. This is actually the first time we've seen you without your crown in this music video. Why was your physical appearance so different in this video compared to all of your others? Yes, I think that, you know, I want to give like this deep answer, you know what I'm saying, to that question. But the reality is the barbershop was closed, it was quarantine, and I couldn't get my beard trimmed. So I was like, you know what, something just told me, I'm going to just go straight quarantine, wolfman look in this particular video and that was a really that was a big moment for me because you know I have a certain aesthetic as Prince JR but I am true to the art and I'm true to what the what, what the song is calling for and what the visual is calling for and I just felt like I wanted to really get into character for that and not appear like how I normally um, appear most of the time and so it was just so powerful because I looked back at that and I said wow I feel like when I first started I would have never done a video where I was looking so raw and rough and you know gritty and you know I got chapped lips and my eyes is all you know dark and stuff but I just was like no that was true to the art and true to the song and the visual that I was going for and I think it's just the most epic one out of all of them and I'm just so even proud of myself for just taking that leap of faith and not worrying about my appearance so much but just what is the heart behind that visual behind that song okay so one fun fact about heart Edin was actually showing me a bunch of different 
ideas for outfits that she had before I came up with each of the characters having different colors. When she sent me the pic of that white outfit, she was wearing it in the picture, I said, you, you know what, I think I want to wear this. So it was mad funny because I basically told her I wanted to wear her outfit in the video and then her outfit was actually her mom's outfit. So I was like, you know what, that like white jumpsuit is kind of hot. And then I basically put it on, you know, squeezed it on, you know what I'm saying? It was, you know, it was a little tight. I was a little thick at the time because of quarantine. But anyway, um, I basically put the outfit on and it just was so epic because I wanted my character to have just white and have no color in that sense. And so it was just so crazy how I'm literally wearing Eden's mom's outfit in the video. <laughs>
Black Boys Don't Die was my first time actually working with children in a video. I had some anxieties just about hopefully the kids are well behaved, hopefully not gave them some snacks. I was like trying to give them some treats and stuff, keep them occupied, uh, keep their energy up. But when I tell you that those kids, and shout out to all of them, just so beautiful and epic, I mean, they all came and were so professional, well behaved and just killed it. I mean, it just blew my mind how absolutely on point and just engaged they were in the process. And for some of them, that was their first time like acting and being in a project like that. Cause it was a very dramatic kind of, you know, role that they were all playing and they just, they did such an excellent job. Can't keep a black boy down. I tried to smile, but they want me to frown. I said they can't keep a black boy as far as social justice and just kind of this you know racial war and the tensions that are going on in america i think what i really would like to see changed is number one just an acknowledgement that there is an issue that there are issues right that systemic racism like all of these, you know, very evil foundation stones of our country, they're there. And when we can at first, you know, just acknowledge these things, then we can actually do the work to now heal and just move forward from these things. But I think that sometimes there's just like this disconnect with even people trying to acknowledge that there even is issues. But just look at the news. Just look at what's going on. Just look at what's happening in your community. Just look on social media. There's clearly some kind of disconnect. And so I think just number one, there needs to just be acknowledgement going forward. And then number two, there needs to be conversation. We got to keep it 100 with each other and just condemn stuff that we know is wrong that just cannot be tolerated any longer. I think for me just being a young black man in America as well, I'm I'm down to help other people have perspective and educate them, but similar to even the message in teenagers, a lot of us are just taught the wrong things and a lot of us are also ignorant to a lot of things. But I do think that an acknowledgement and then conversation and then action, actionable steps moving forward to change to repent from our past sins from 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 really trying to move on from even just some of the trauma and the strands of just uh evil that have been so prevalent in the country and just be looking forward to things being better you know but i know it's a process and it's not going to happen overnight but i think that as a country just as people us coming together to really focus on these things it really and it sounds cliche it is really going to make the world the country a better place for the children As a parent, seeing my six-year-old son, Isaiah Sincere, in such a moving and powerful video, it really made me know that he feels proud of being a part of a production like that. From the moment it came on, I was like, wait a second. His scene where he was serious and he looked up in the sky, I'm like, that's my boy. Like, that's my baby right there. And he is making such a statement. When it was released and we watched it, he started putting it up on the TV himself. And he was very proud of himself. I think it really made him feel that he was a part of something, you know, that would help him. And still, to this day, when people come over to visit, he'll go to the remote and he'll put that video on. He won't say, watch me but he'll put it on the TV. And I know that this is helping him to deal with some of his emotions, you know, and it's hard for our young black boys who don't understand what's going on 
with racism and police brutality. So for him to be such a part of such a moving and powerful video is going to last for him for many years. The message, of course, is that we are champions. And we know from our history, you know, the tenacity that we have comes from our struggle. Um, but we have to take our struggle and we have to turn it around. Because our struggle can envelop us. It can overtake us. Um, we have to use it as our strength to move forward. You know, although there are men and boys dying every day our strength will not die us as a people will not die because we won't lay down and let us let ourselves die or perish but the part that was so touching for me really is where i had some tears was when isaiah and his cousin carter were walking in the end with their arm around each other and they were smiling at that point. So it, you know, it just went with the whole, you know, the seriousness of it, but we are champions and now we're and it and it went to color and happiness, which means overcoming and you know, just being survivors. As a parent, I felt, you know, I, I felt moved and I felt like I needed to do something as well to, you know, to piggyback off of it. And I felt like it should be something that just doesn't end with that video. I respect Prince JR because he is a Christian, a believer like myself, someone who knows that it is not easy to be on that side in, in this society where Anything goes, you know, we see chaos, no rules being followed, but know that we have a mission and we have a goal, and that is to bring others to, to believe in Jesus Christ. And I respect Prince JR for keeping that as uh, what he brings to all of his music. Black Boys Don't Die is definitely a very socially conscious video. How did the tragic events of 2020 affect this video and this music? You know, if you go to the earlier videos in my career, even Respect, I've always been someone who's been an advocate of using my art to really illustrate uh, very conscious and very relevant messages surrounding race, surrounding religion, and just surrounding all the conflicts and issues that we have arising in our world today. And so for me, it was definitely the events of 2020 you know, they played a factor, but I think just who I am as a person, I'm always conscious of producing that type of art that's going to have a little bit more significance and meaning than just the average pop song. And so I think it was just really necessary to really highlight though the young children, black boys and black girls specifically, because they really are, as Whitney Houston said, the future. And so I gotta give them props and I really have to be exemplary in that type of way. And I'm just so extremely proud of that project. What are some of the most important messages that you were trying to convey through this video? I think one of the main messages that I was trying to get at in Black Boys Don't Die is black power and really self-love. Because so many times when you are looking at media, when you're looking at how people may treat people who look like you, it could be discouraging when the way that you're being presented and the way people talk about people that look like you or, or just, you know, just act like you, then you could start to have a negative impression of yourself. And I just felt like it was starting to be like, there was just too much negative impressions of black people. And like we were, it was almost like people felt like we were being exterminated. Like people are trying to get rid of us and erase us. But the reality is that you can't because black boys don't die. The melanin is always popping and the black lives will always matter. And so I think that's why it was very important for me to make sure I illustrated that to empower even the young black boys and black girls out there so that, no, 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 you have like a superpower. You are very special, you're very beautiful. And that's where I wanted to show the kind of, you know, 
sometimes dark aspects of our experience as black people in America. But then towards the end of the video, I wanted it to be color and bright and champions and crown the, the black boys and black girls in that video to let them know that you are young kings, young queens, and you, you, are, you are popping, you know what I'm saying? And regardless of whatever's happening in the world, you know, don't let that take away your light as daunting and sometimes depressing these realities of our, of our world really are. So I think it was just really important for me to empower them and I wanted them to wear the crowns in the videos so that they could walk away feeling like the young black kings and queens that they are. One fun fact about black boys don't die. I think my casting and a lot of my um, choices and who I you know, want to be featured in my videos is very deliberate, very specific, but I think it was just so beautiful to have some of my godchildren in the actual video and my family um, in one of my actual projects. So um, a, a couple of the kids are actually related to me and it just was so beautiful even just being able to collaborate with my family and then even for you know my aunts, my uncles, and you know my um, the rest of my extended family to just see you know uh, our little cousins in the video was just really powerful and so what can we expect from Prince JR in 2021 I just like to entertain I just like to really produce art that's epic that's grandiose of course I would want things to be on a bigger platform and be lying to say that's not the, that's not the case but I even love just the platform and the and the range and the reach that I've been given now and what I've been able to see God do just even now with my art and with my music and so there's a lot more videos coming there's a lot more visuals and there's a lot more projects and music coming that I think is really going to be a surprise for a lot of people but I think it's also going to show people even more sides of who Prince JR really is. Two. Do, do, do I need to clap louder? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 11 music videos, two albums, two EPs, and a whole interview series during a... Excuse me! <laughs> Excuse me! It's good. Um, when are we getting a pre uh, sorry? When are we getting a collaboration out? <laughs> when the camera sugar just like threw it off <laughs> and knocked me out my zone. Okay, so one fun fact about say la vie. I would say um, one fun fact. What was what was I gonna say for this? Man, I don't even remember what I was gonna say for that. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it clap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you ask the question, you have to restate. <laughs> you understand? You got the same story from my mom too. Yes. So. Well, going into Mary Poppins. Take it back. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. Put he clapped his hands. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a clapper, but it, it does the same thing. Same effect. What I like most. Nope, that's not it. That's not what I was supposed to do. Uh, I like the fact that he was very educated. You know, we're in, I don't remember if it was the 50s or the 60s. How did you personally feel about Rose's actions and certain decisions she made in the video? Just, what do you mean? Like, did you feel like she was being Wait, how do I rephrase that? <laughs> what did you enjoy most about working with Prince Jacob? What I enjoyed the most about working with P uh, Prince A uh, ah, I cannot <laughs> say it! <laughs> it's gonna be in the bloopers, yeah. No, this is good. This is gonna be in the bloopers. <laughs> Prince JR. Cedric. <laughs> 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 <laughs>